and um, uh, and that the heart muscle here at the center uh, is the golden spiral. It's literally uh, five spins inside, seven spins outside. And um, if we look at that here, uh, you see the the sigil of truth, which became the Anu, uh, um, the Ophain and Enochian, uh, with seven spins outside, five spins inside. And if you animate that, I think the actual animation is here. You can actually play it. So here's the seven arrows to the tetrahedron. I don't know how much phase delay is there in reaching your screen. But um, so the seven color map of the so where all colors touch every other color on um, the self organizing golden spiral. Uh, five spins inside, seven spins outside. So, the seven color map, the seven arrows actually touch one arrow, one set of arrows touches every color, and uh, every color touches every other color, which is a profound solution in the physics, of, in topology physics, which was originally developed uh, in anthroposophy and Pettigrew's dissections and um, Marinelli's work, the heart is not a pump. So the final thought there uh, from the biodynamic heart is not a pump, Marinelli was that the heart is now throwing the blood in a spiral vortex. So the heart is not pumping. The heart is rather throwing a sequence of vortex tornadoes, literally donuts. And those vortex, that those tornadoes, travel to the periphery in the blood, maintaining their phase angle, which is the alphabet of the heart, the title of my first book, and uh, the sonic shadow of that spiral on the torus is the physics of how um, uh, the original um, spectrograms of the Hebrew alphabet was done by Carlos Suarez, which then I replicated, in my book, Alphabet of the Heart, we show that the harmonic signature of the sounds of the Hebrew alphabet, Alpha, Aleph, Beit, Gimel, Dalet, made the letters. And that was the other picture we had here, that golden archer's picture, was we actually, so the spectrograms, and here they are. So here is, here's Aleph, Beit, Gimel, and here is the frequency signature, and here is the, the picture of the letter forms. So, the, the harmonic analysis of the sounds of the alphabet letters, which are literally the alphabet of the heart, uh, make the pictures of the letters themselves, which is a very profound introduction to the, the psychophysics behind sacred alphabets. So anyway. <laughs> Hopefully that was a bit of a happily ever after. <laughs> well, that is, yes, and that is a very profound solution, as you were saying, and it brings us right back to what you had said earlier about the Sanskrit and the Hebrew being within, just depending on, on the angle and the perspective. Right, that's, that's in the original article, goldenmean.info slash DNA ring, where, um, it's a big article, but if on the, in the lower part of that, here's the, here's the animation. So let's see if this will play on your screen there. We get any packet collisions, but so this is the seven color map of the torus in the center here in, in green, and there's the ABCs up top. So, th yeah, so this that's Aleph, and there's baby. Are you, are you sharing a screen because I don't see it? Oh, okay. Let me see. I don't know how to speak. Oh, I didn't bear with me just 30 seconds. That's my mistake. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, so hopefully, so there you're seeing the, the top is just a spiral, and this is here, Aleph, Bait. Is this animation coming through? I imagine. Yes, uh, yes it is. Thank you. Aleph, Bait. So there, there you have the, the origin of Hebrew, and this is a, another three dimensional version of it. So this is all our animations goldenmean.info slash DNA ring, and, and there's your heart, five spins and sides. Seven spins outside. But then if we scroll down here, look at the Hebrew versus the Sanskrit. And again, this is a big, <laughs> it, this is our original work on the Oracle's alphabets and it's gotten a little big here. But, uh, and this is the, from the Lord of the Ring, you see the, the, 
what there is only one ring that can unite them all, and there's, that's the ancient Figo Fino Ungaric, which uh, uh, was used to write the book Lord of the Ring, and we now know what the ring was, what the letters were. So, yeah, here we have. So let's see if we can zoom in just a little bit here. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So <clears throat> you see, in the Hebrew on top, the tag in or crownlet, three little arrows there, were indicate to indicate to the rabbi where the symmetry axis went through the tetra cube to give you a point of reference from which to navigate. Remember, you need to be able to visualize these letters when you lucid dream and when you die and when you make a golem because they determine the phase angle of the electromagnetic toroid of your plasma, which is the only way you steer when you're dead and when you're dreaming. <laughs> because the new equations have proven that that same spiral and that same torus is how you make gravity, which is why the Viman and the Nazi bell were called a mercury vortex, and we have the equations. So this becomes a plasma projector. It is a gravity maker, absolutely. So anyway, on, on the, on the right-hand side, you see the same shapes here that all that's happened in Sanskrit is instead of taking... <clears throat> the tagging or crownlet, which the rabbi did, they used a vertical and horizontal bar to indicate your orientation with respect to the tetra cube, but it's the same letter shapes. So this is plasma physics. That's what it is. It's a universal language. It's absolute physics. And, you know, our friend John McGovern, who writes all the papers on ancient shaman alphabets in plasma physics for Los Alamos Plasma Research Center with Tony Peratt writes all the papers with the physicists now, claims he can read every shaman's cave painting in every country because the shaman was seeing plasma. It's plasma science. Okay. So we have fun with that. And that article about that is goldenmean.info slash whale dreamers. Talks about Tony Peratt and, and John McGovern and friends. Yeah, I'm looking forward to diving into more of that one of these days. But what you said was our it's our orientation to the phase angle. So does that not also bring us back to the thoughts that you're having when you're in the therapy? You know, w would that that to create a specific frequency? Well, yes. If, for example, if you ask the rabbi how he uh, creates a golem, which is similar to talking, asking a horse whisperer how it works, actually. <laughs> uh, he, he says, I fill, I close my eyes and I fill my visual cavity, which we now know is a hologram in the optical cortex, for Carl mm -hmm. with one letter at a time. Now we know what that letter is. It's the shadow of one particular locked-in tilt of this torus, which is to say, it is plasma projected in a certain vector direction, one direction only. And the unique thing about Hebrew and Sanskrit letters is that each letter is, indicates only one possible angle of tilt. There is no other symmetry. Every letter is totally indicative of one direction only. And now we know that's a vector propulsion director. If you happen to know why an object falls to the ground, you know this is the origin of propulsion. Actually, this is how you make gravity. And this is, remember, when you're an astronaut, you gotta, you got to cool your jets and you got to navigate. <laughs> you need to be, know how to focus that plasma. And that's what the aboriginals call the dream time and the solids. 